Hello and welcome back to Seasons of the Wolf. Right. Da, 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 da. He's going to die from his wounds and his burns in the next turn, so let's just put some axes into that guy. Ah, so they uh, got rid of the burns, did they? Hmm. Mildly annoying, but I can deal with it. Now he's staggered. In fact, they're both staggered. Althea, hide in the shadows. I really don't want to do Burn him. Mm -hmm. so it was annoying when they start tossing out potions. Oh, come on, seriously? Oh, this is going to be a really irritating fight, isn't it? He's staggered. Hit him with a crit for double damage. Burn the front row. Okay, he's paralyzed, which is good. Krim. Stab him. Valus. Use axes and take him down. Shalasa. Quick strike. Heal up the front row. Okay, his speed's been increased, but it's not going to save him. Now, Shalasa, stop this. Oh, you're still paralyzed, are you? Okay, defend. Althea, snipe. Grim, kill. Burn. And he's down. Good. Now we've just got one ranger to deal with who will not be a problem. Might take a little while to wear him down with just base attacks, but I'm not concerned about him doing excessive amounts of damage to the party. It hurts because I hit something important. <laughs> and down we go. Nicely done, everyone. I'll prepare the boat. Follow me once you've beaten off the first wave. So she's falling back, so... Move Althea forward and bring Riley into the party. Confirm formation. Naga mercenaries. <laughs> They're kind of cool, I'll admit. <laughs> They're quite nicely designed. Althea, hide in the shadows, boost your defense significantly. Right, Riley. Hit that one with fire. No, sorry, that was Shay hitting him with fire. Hit that one with... That's, yeah, that's air damage. Ruined it. Forty-four point, yeah, okay, the firestorm's gonna do the most damage. Including killing one of them. Krim. Strike him. Bayless, strike him. I won't be surprised if he ends up using a resurrect at some point in the near future, so I'm going to hit him hard now. I'll use Althea. He's staggered, isn't he? Ah, but she doesn't have enough for a crit. Oh well. Just snipe him. That's okay, that's okay. And she's gone to guard. Shay, really burn. Don't want to do this to you. Krim. Kill. Recap, it's really good, I've got to say. Now, it's one of the few attacks that's good without being OP. And I'll be honest, I don't think there's any attack in this game that I've found that is genuinely overpowered. Damn You know, there are some that are, you know, pretty darn powerful. <laughs> You're it. So yeah, they're both guarding. Okay, Althea. Oops, Kill him. My own power. Shay. Burn him. Valus, take him down. Okay. 
like uh, hail. Oh boy, out there, need some healing. Okay, that's her down. Tree of life, not there. Fortunately, everybody's running out of mana points, but that's okay because hopefully shouldn't have too many more uh, battles after this one. That was a good score. He said, hoping and crossing his fingers. Ooh, handcrafted spear. Now, none of my guys actually use spears, so that's kind of pointless, but... That was the last of them. But more are coming. Quickly, to the boat! Eventually. Well, I'd say that went quite well. Nothing we couldn't handle. Then nothing we could loot. And definitely not enough heads to split. I suppose the really important question is, was Shalassa successful? I was. Well then, don't keep the news to yourself. Do we know why the Empire is here? No. Huh? But you said you were successful. I was. I gathered all the information I could find. However, that particular piece is missing. What? But you were in that camp. Someone down there must know what they're doing here. Well, the commander knows. A Captain Starard. But he wasn't in the camp. He wasn't? No. Apparently he's currently meeting with the other captains of his fleet. Hmm, so we really don't know much. We do know they're probably not planning to gather a lot of soldiers here. They're not? How do we know that? By the fact that Captain Sturrard's left to meet with the other captains. If they were planning to amass their army here, the captains would have come to him instead. Ah, yes, that makes sense. Besides, that's what the cadet I spoke to said, and I doubt he was lying to me. So at least we could tell Moreau that his camp here is probably no danger, although we don't know what the Empire's planning yet, right? We can also tell Moreau that it's probably some kind of searching mission. The cadets seem to think they were looking for someone. But he didn't know who. No, but definitely someone dangerous, or they wouldn't be sending that many people. Well, at least that's something. Indeed it is. Good job, Sir Lassa. Thank you. Hey. Shalasa? Yes? This mission just now. The Empire Camp. Yes? Is there something you're not telling us? No. When we arrived, you immediately wanted to go alone. And I've told you why. And that's all there is to it? Yes. Well, no. No? I think you're all too careless, too certain of your own strength. It bothers me. Oh. But at the same time, I know that's the reason why you work together so well. You're certain that you cannot fail, and that certainty makes you powerful. I know that I have the same trust in you that I have in everybody else. And you know that you shouldn't trust me. Yes, but I still do. And you're a fool. Maybe, but you're not as bad as you think. You don't know me. But I'm not afraid of getting to know you. Really? Really? You should know that much by now. Mm. Come on. Tell me something about you. Anything. I promise I won't be shocked. If you insist. Oh, sure, why not? At least a little peace and quiet's probably a nice change of pace after what we've been through recently. Yeah. It seems like our lives revolve around fighting and all sorts of different enemies. I thought that would at least change a little after we left the arena. <laughs> Life is struggle, it always has been and it always will be. <laughs> You're sounding a lot like Krim. Krim? <laughs> no, definitely not. We don't have much in common. You both seem quite comfortable with, well, that life of struggle, as you call it. Krim lives for killing. I kill for a living. We're quite opposites. Even Krim would probably agree we don't have much in common. Yeah, she probably would. Though for different reasons. She'd probably say that you don't care about honour. I certainly don't. Honour's an illusion. It's what people use to justify taking lives. But that's a foolish concept. Nothing justifies taking lives. Oh? <sighs> a life lost cannot be brought back. When you kill, you take something irreplaceable from this world. No concept of honour can make up for that. But you're an assassin. You must have killed quite a few people. I have. 
So how do you justify that? I don't. I know what I'm doing is terrible. Then why do you do it? Because I've chosen to. It's my path in life. It's not a pretty one, but it's mine. I see. I mean, look at Jariel. Look at the path he chose for his life. Devoting a hundred years to, what, gathering knowledge? It is a noble goal. It is, but think again. A hundred years of travel, with all the dangers that lurk on the way? What do you think? How many people die on those century journeys? Mm, probably quite a few. And still, this is the path Jariel has chosen. Even though he may die in the way, he has chosen to devote most of his life to one single task. How foolish is that? Well, we elves actually live a lot longer than a hundred years, so while a century is a lot, it's hardly most of our lives. All right, then consider rightly. From what I gather, his goal in life is getting rich as quickly as possible, and then settling down and enjoying his wealth. Yeah. That's not exactly a very great goal. No, I think it is. It's something feasible that, once it's done, will keep him out of danger. I think what he's planning is very reasonable. The problem, of course, is that he's very easily distracted from that goal. The fact he's still hanging around with us is proof of that. So, would you prefer that he left us? What? No, of course not. Riley's a lot of fun to have around. Frustrating at times, but definitely entertaining. I guess that comes with being an illusionist. Probably. Say, Althea... Hmm? Between these three, Krim, Jari, or Riley, which one do you like the best? Interesting question. I have the most respect for Krim. Riley's the most entertaining. Jariel is... Mm, he's a little dull for my tastes. So it comes down to Riley or Krim, and it's respect or like. It's probably Riley, to be honest. Definitely Riley. Really? Yeah, why not? It's as you're saying, Riley's great fun to have around. He's unconventional, he's clever, and he's just the right kind of a scoundrel. Hmm. I didn't think anyone else would say that about Riley. So you like Riley the best? Sure. He has none of that pompous honour talk in him that I always get sick of from Krim, and his view of the world is much more realistic than Jariel's. I mean, I can't imagine Riley going on a journey that lasts a hundred days, let alone years. He knows that this world can kill you if you're not careful. But he doesn't take risks. He's definitely not a coward. He does take risks, but only the ones he thinks he can handle. That's another thing I like about him. He's reasonable, a quality f that a few other people I know are lacking. The funny part is that Riley doesn't seem to know how to make the best impression with these qualities. Oh, I think he knows perfectly well what he's capable of, but he chooses to hide them. Really? Think about it. He's an illusionist. He knows how to make others see what he wants them to see. Do you really think he'd appear the way he does if that's not exactly what he wanted? So you think... His personality is just an act. Yeah. Interesting. She could have a point thinking about it. Certain part of its personality. But even I can't figure out which. He's really good at what he's doing. <laughs> it's admirable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Huh? Where's Moreau? I thought for sure he would want to know what we found out. Do you think it just wasn't that important to him? I doubt that. He seems to be rather concerned when he sent us out to investigate that outpost. Ah, there you are. Do we know you? No, no, not yet. Governor Moreau told me to expect you at the harbour, but somehow I must have missed you there. Where is the scoundrel? Meeting with a smuggler at the Lonely Paulie's, he went alone. Who's Lonely Paulie? Not who, what. Lonely Paulie's is a palm tree standing out on a very, very small island, two hours to the southeast, southeast. A palm tree? Yeah, just a small speck of sand rising out of the ocean and a palm tree on top of it. Interesting. How did it get there? Beats me. I suppose someone planted it there. Why? Just because? Look, in any case, Moreau said to tell you to wait for him just a little longer. Maybe we should follow him to that island. Mm, if he's meeting a smuggler there, I doubt it's a good idea. Why? If Moreau's meeting with him, the smuggler should be friendly towards us. I tend to agree with Riley here. Smugglers may be friendly, but the ones I've met don't tend to work for one side only. They usually take as many jobs as they can get from anyone who pays them. So you're saying... There's probably a good reason why Moreau went alone. 
Not the least of which maybe that that smuggler trusts him as little as he trusts the smuggler. Well, in that case, let's just come back later. That's fair enough, so... Ah, we can go to the bathhouse again, which is good, because... Well, I was going to say we could do with healing up, but it appears we've auto-healed. Either way, let's go to the bathhouse. <laughs> I quite like this. Oh, depressed face, depressed face. Smiley face, smiley face. Let's talk to Shalasa again. Sorry about that short break there. I had to inter I had to uh, edit out a segment that got interrupted by a phone call, so I've taken it back to where we were. <coughs> ah, hello, Althea. Nice of you to drop by. Yeah, I thought it was about time. I've really missed our little talks. So did I. You're pretty much the only person who's interested in spending some time with me. And that's just the way you want it, right? Hmm? That most people stay away and bother you as little as possible? Eh, true. Though you're different. You're definitely not a bother. Ah, yes, not a bother. Thanks for that. You're more than not a bother out there. You're a genuinely pleasant person to have around. Alright, that's a compliment that I can actually accept and return. I really enjoy your company too, Shalassa. Yeah, you and I, we, we share something special. Yeah. Althea? Hmm? Have you ever considered spending even more time with me? What do you mean, even more time? Well, more time. More time together. Doing more than that. More than just talking. Um, you mean... Yeah. Can't say the thought hasn't occurred to me. Would you say it's possible? Sh sure, it's it's possible. I mean, I I really like you. I think you're unbelievably hot. <laughs> but well, it's a big step. Yeah, thought so. You elves, you're not that casual with your uh, relationships, are you? I I don't think that it has much to do with me being an elf. It's more that. Well, I was raised to be very careful with these things, not to jump into relationships. I see. But if you're asking whether theoretically I would consider with you, hmm, then I'd have to say yes. Of all the people I know, you're the person I feel closest with. So, do you want to try? Give me a little more time, Shalasa. I'm not entirely certain of my feelings just yet. As soon as I am, I'll come to you again, alright? Yeah. Yeah, that's quite alright. Thanks. No. Thank you. Okay. So, I think we've got a rescue mission to go on now, haven't we? So let's go to Ninjuna. The island of Ninjuna. A few days later. Well, that was easier than expected. I sure thought sneaking past those ships would be more trouble than that. I suppose the patrols don't consider a single dinghy a threat, or there would have been more trouble. At least we didn't have to throw half as much as I thought row half as much as I thought. The albatross is anchored quite a distance away. The rising tide helped us, and if we turn this right, the falling tide will help us on our way back. How much time do we have? The tide should turn around in three hours. And from that point on, we'll have another three hours until the falling tide is strongest. We want to be here an hour before that. So it should be 3 plus 3 minus 1. Five hours, right? Yes. Sheesh, why didn't you just say so? In any case, we certainly won't need that much. If that large mansion is up there is where we need to go. Half an hour to get to it, half an hour to get back. Four hours to find Gonzalo should be plenty. You can get there in half an hour, yes, if you take the streets. The large, well-lit and probably guarded streets. Uh, yeah, I think we'd better not do that then. Bah, I'm not afraid of a few guards, I can take them. We should still consider a few other options. This island has some nice, lush vegetation. Wanted to approach in the cover of the trees. Ah, it would take significantly longer. My estimation is around an hour and a half or so. That would leave us less time to go looking for Gonzalo, but still plenty. If you're going through the woods anyway, why not circle that mansion entirely and approach it from behind? What good would that do? 
If you take a closer look at that island, you can see that this side is the only place where ships can land, so the other side will probably be entirely unguarded. You mean, we're coming for a si that they aren't expecting? I would think so. That, however, will take another half hour more. I suppose we'll have very little time to go looking for Gonzalo if we do that. That may still be our only option. We cannot risk a fight. If anybody hears us, then every man on this entire island will be out for us. And even we can't take on that many. Well, this is a volcanic island. No Rowinda, no lava. Aww. Hey, guys, I think I know how to lower the risk of discovery quite a bit. How so? I know a really nice spell, Quintessence of the Moon. It's a spell that makes a single target perfectly quiet, or rather it prevents anyone hearing sounds coming from that target. How does this help? A single target isn't exactly... Let me finish. Under a full moon, however, I can boost the power of this spell so it covers an area of 60 feet in diameter. No one outside that area hears what happens inside. Ooh, now that will be helpful. The only downside to it is that I need my full concentration to keep this up. I won't be able to help you out if we get into any fights. Huh, you're not much of a fighter anyway. In any case, the idea is great, Rally, and you should absolutely do that. We still need to decision on how do we approach the mansion, Althea. Do we approach on the road? Do we go through the woods? Or do we circle the mansion entirely and approach over behind? Less time to get the job done, but I'd rather take the circuitous route and then potentially go back through the woods if we run short on time at the end. So, stay the long way around. Perfect. We'll be able to surprise who's ever guarding our target. I only hope we still have enough time to find Gonzalo once we're there. We may have to hurry, but it's the safest way. She lost us right about that. See, what did I tell you? There's the mansion, and no guards on this side. Then let's get inside, and stay quiet, everybody. So, where do you think Gonzalo will be? Well, he's the manservant of the Zoras, so he'd be somewhere close to them. Or he could be in the slaves' quarters. Well... Yeah, I suppose wherever he is would be the slave's quarters ruined, but that doesn't help us find him. No, it doesn't. But that sound post there does. Huh? What sign? What is it, Riley? Can you believe these people? A signpost labelled slave's quarters. As if they wanted everybody to know where they keep their slave. I think what they want is for everyone to know that they have a slave. It's probably some sort of status symbol for them. So Gonzalo's in that little shack the signpost is pointing towards. I suppose he is. Then we should probably get him and just leave. Whoa, ho hold your horses, Jariel. Still have a bit of time left before we have to leave, right? Right. Then what's keeping us from checking out the mansion and seeing the pretty things the Zoras have inside? You mean, raid it? Hey, they're slave owners. Under the laws of shackle split, that means taking their riches is alright, right? Well technically. And I say, let's do it. These people do business with the Dingarians, and we all know how the Dingarians are. They deserve to get robbed. Still, the Zoras have never done anything to us. This is us going after them, not the other way round. You're right, Valus. The thought of breaking and entering a mansion to loot it makes me feel... a little uncomfortable, too. I thought the whole reason for us coming here is to break into that mansion and take a slave away from the Zoras, isn't it? Certainly. I don't want to know how much they paid for Gonzalo, but we're definitely going to steal him. Why not take a little more, then? As long as Riley can keep us from getting hurt, I have no qualms with that. Your call, Althea. We could just go to the slave quarters and take Gonzalo with us, while we explore the mansion and take whatever we can get. Hmm. What should we do? Uh, turn left to search. Okay, let's search the entrance hall. Follow me. Let's take a look. Okay. Turns left to search. So we get to search one place. Search the gallery. Quiet. Let's head upstairs. Quiet. A patrol. Ah, let's take them. Charge! What? Guards! Guards! Quiet if you value your life. No one can hear you anyway. What, what do you want? We won't hurt you. All we want is Gonzalo. G Gonzalo, what do you want from a simple slave? We've come to free him. Huh? Free him? Yes, now tell us where he is. 
I am Gonzalo. You are? But then why were you calling for the guards? I, I saw you and all these dead people. I thought this was maybe an attack by an enemy of the Zoras. What dead? I haven't killed anybody! What the hell? Oh well. In any case, come with us quickly. It won't take long until these dead guards are found. We'll need to be gone then. C come with you. Where to? To your sister. Anais? Anais is alive? Alive and very much looking forward to meeting you. Now come. Eventually. We made it. I still can't believe it. My sister. I'm going to see my sister again. You are. And now come. We still have a journey ahead of us. I'd follow you to the end of the world if Inez was waiting for me there. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you with all of my heart. And if there's anything I can do for you, if you ever need anything, just, just take it. What I own is yours. No need to thank us. Knowing we could help you reunite you with your brother is reward enough. Hey, hey. That quest was really easy. <laughs> Probably because I took the sneaky, sneaky approach and didn't have to kill anybody. So it was a plus. So Althea, speed up. Shay, speed up. Valis, uh, strength up. Grim, strength up. R Rowinda the crazy. There we go. But I really want to do something, something for you. Something special. And now you've definitely earned a reward. Of course, I can't really give you that much. Well, it's not to ask my actual. There's actually a favour you could do for me, Ines. Anything. Just say the word. You aren't going to take advantage of these poor people, are you? Of course not. It's just a small favour, but one that would be immensely useful to me. Can you forge custom weapons? I certainly can. I once owned a set of custom-made hatchets, weighed for ease of ha weighted for ease of handling. Yes, yes, of course. Come with me at once and I'll show you what's possible. Valus. Don't worry, Krim. Nothing fancy. Just something practical. Hmm. Sorry about my sister. She's always been very excitable, even as a child. Looks as though she hasn't changed at all through the years. Actually, she's changed a lot. She's always been this enthusiastic. When we first met her, she was rather quiet and somber. Probably because of being separated from her family all these years. Yes, that can be very traumatic. It's a good thing you weren't hurt, Gonzalo. I was lucky to get sold to somewhere outside of Dingaria, from what I've heard, though my owners never let me forget that I was only a slave. Even though you didn't do much a normal paid servant wouldn't have done or did you? Well, there were a few things that that I wouldn't have done even for all the money in the world. Like? I'd rather not say. Oh. But on the bright side, my masters at least made sure that I was presentable at all times. Whenever they had guests, they showed off that they could afford a slave. Ugh, so you were shown around as something to boast with. Well, everybody who came to visit Ninjuna did a lot of boasting. I think the Zoras just wanted to keep up. Really? What did the guests have to show off with? Well, for example, only a few weeks before you rescued me, we had a Captain Storad visit us. He came on the largest ship I'd ever seen, and he proudly told us that he was the crown of the seas, the flagship of the navy, and had recently been assigned to command it for his bravery in combat. Crown of the sea sure sounds impressive. It did look impressive too. Five masts. All right, that is big. What's big? A ship Gonzalo saw while he was a slave in Injuna. Some flagship called Crown of the Seas. Ah, the flagship of the Empire. Where's Anais? She's going to pick out the right kind of iron for the hatchet she's going to make me. Said it wouldn't take long and that we should come back sometime later. What? She's gone to work already? Oh, but there's so much I wanted to tell her. Why don't you go to her and do just that? But if you're waiting for her to finish these hatchets, I think we'll do just as she told me and come back later. You go to her, Gonzalo. I'm sure she's not forgotten about you. Yeah, I suppose so. Right, that to me seems like an excellent point to end this video and say thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.